you might not have thought about this before, but it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a useful concept for you to have, and it's one that in order to be really educated about what, the way markup works, you really have to understand. And that's the idea of the interpreter versus the language. HTML is a language. XML is a language. RTF, the markup of Word, that's a language. The markup that PDF files use, those are, that's a language. It's just a way of stating something. In order for that language to be used, there has to be a program. There has to be some software that reads that markup and does something with it. The program that reads the markup and does something with it is called the interpreter. Now for, for a word processing markup, let's take the markup, either the binary or the open format markup that Word uses, the interpreter is Microsoft Word, right? That's, you wouldn't look at a Word file outside of Word. The Word file is really useless without Word, in fact, because Word is the only one who knows what to do with that file. And so there the interpreter and the, um, the, interpreter and the language are closely tied. It's a proprietary language that only that interpreter knows how to speak. HTML, on the other hand, is an open language that many browsers know how to speak. And theoretically, I was there when they made these statements, theoretically, um, HTML is an open, well-defined standard and everyone should be able to read everyone else's HTML files and they should look the same no matter what browser you open them in. And we all know that that's a total farce, that you have to do all sorts of things to make sure that your, your same HTML, which is open HTML, which obeys all the HTML standards, looks the same in all browsers. And it's the bane of designers to make sure that they have clean HTML that displays the same in all browsers. However, by and large, and for the most part, an HTML interpreter, the browser, which is the thing that reads the HTML file, makes sense of it, and does something with it, in this case, displays it, um, that interpreter, knows everything it needs to know about HTML. And because HTML is an open standard and everybody knows exactly all the tags and how they all work, it's possible to create a browser, it's possible to create an interpreter that reads that standard format. Okay, so we have the proprietary browsers that are, or the proprietary interpreters that are tied hip to hip with the languages that they interpret. We have the open interpreters like the HTML browsers that behave according to standards and theoretically at least, um, many different interpreters can all work with the same content, can all work with the same language. And then we have XML. I've said before that XML actually doesn't have an interpreter per se because it doesn't have a standard set of tags. I think you can see at this point, I hope you can see, that if you don't have standard set of tags, how can you have a standard interpreter? Because it could be any tag that, that an interpreter comes across in an XML file, and so it's, you can't really figure out what to do with those tags. Now, so what's the, what's the response to that? The response to that is to make a meta interpreter. And this is a general rule when, when the thing is too open, when the thing is too undefined in order to make a program that actually reads it and does exactly what it's supposed to do, you make a program that can load the rules of how to make something happen as well as loading the content. And so it's an open interpreter. And the open interpreter that I'm talking about really in this case is um, uh, there's, a, there's another one that I'll talk about in a moment, but the open interpreter I'm talking about at this point is transforms. XSL transforms, which we'll talk about later in the course, are the interpreters. They open and read an, H, an XML file and they do the right thing. Only there is no definitive right thing to do, and so in addition to that, you also have to put the rules into that interpreter. And so in effect, you're writing your own interpreter, and what XML gives you is a platform for writing an interpreter. That's why it's a meta interpreter. It's an interpreter that can interpret your interpreter. You write the interpreter, and the interpreter runs on the platform of XSLT. Now that may be a little obtuse at this point, but as we get into transforms, I think you'll understand it better. Suffice it to say that there's no such thing as a standard XML transformer, or excuse me, a standard XML interpreter, because there's no such thing as standard XML. If you, were, if you live inside of a community, for example, either, for example, there's the DITA community inside user assistance people, and they, um, they, they have written a lot of the interpreters for that because they've created standard tags. And so if you are in a community that has adopted some XML standard, then the possibility arises for standard interpreters. But in general, there can't be any such thing as a standard XML interpreter because there's no such thing as a standard XML tag. It could be anything you want it to be.